this is going to be just the kind of video that makes me a reviewer and a YouTuber and a blogger who is not exactly an influencer because I want to talk a bit about Arcturix Valence. Arcturix Valence clothing is something that you probably have never heard of if you aren't into a very specific area of menswear, of men's fashion, which doesn't quite look like fashion, which is performance menswear, also sometimes quite affectionately called techwear. Techwear, performance menswear, it has the idea of bringing together performance characteristics, so for example Gore-Tex materials, and a look towards fashionable cuts and products which are not made to just look like some fashionable thing for one season or that are just made for a sort of throwaway approach to clothing but to have very peculiar functionality, very special looks, a quite different approach. One of the parts of it, for example, is that it tends to be a bit dear queer in the way that uh, William Gibson used it in one of his novels. Something that sort of looks like it might be special forces inspired or something like that. Because, not so much because the people who wear it are or anything like that, but because people who wear that want to maybe have a bit of a feel of that or give an impression of it. That's, I hope, not my intention. I just like things which are made to be non-fashionable, yet, in my opinion, look good and perform for a long time and very well. But, well, it's been funny because since I got to China there were quite a few Chinese who said you look kind of like you are some soldier from the German army or something. Well, happens sometimes. Valence, by now it's not Arcturix Valence anymore, they just call it Valence nowadays, has been around by now for 10 years. When it first came out, it caused quite a stir. People were very much like, what is that supposed to be? Suddenly you get a Gore-Tex jacket, which doesn't really tell you what brand it is from. There's no logo on it, has peculiar cuts, which are more technical, but also more fashion forward, but not in any way that luxury fashion usually is and that cost you an easy thousand bucks. Wow! People were really oftentimes a bit mad about it since it said it came from Arcturix and Arcturix is expensive enough but now suddenly it's even more expensive but it's not even made for the outdoors, for the mountains, what? But, well, that was just the thing that the sort of tech wear had only just started and that brand decided to go in that direction. There was a recent article which was quite interesting in some of the people involved behind it, which if I can find it, I can put it into the notes and you can have a look at it. It's quite peculiar, but apparently it has been going quite well. Hmm. One thing that hardly anybody ever talks about in terms of this going well is how this stuff actually holds up. It is not so dependent on seasons. There is a fall winter and a spring summer drop of new gear of it. But a jacket like that, you're probably, hopefully, not going to want one every new season. You're not going to be able to afford it most of the time, even though I must say I've seen outlet center products from luxury brands and from real fashion brands, which easily cost two or three times as much, even when it's just a suit or something. But it's still expensive for the ordinary citizen. So, yeah, somehow one of the things like how it has no logo is that very few people talk about it. There are some forums where people discuss where to get what and what it's like, but YouTube videos, there are definitely not so many, and long-term reviews, mm -mm. But this is where I want to go. Here, now, what I'm wearing are the spec pants and the stealth shirt, if I remember it right. 
The Stellis shirt is made from a material which has some Kevlar in it. It actually needs something underneath or otherwise it feels a bit strange. But if I show you details of that, well, you can notice that it's a bit peculiar. There's those zippers here, for example. A zipper pocket here. As usual, it's laminated, the hidden snap placards there. But it has held up really well. Now I found that there is some of the laminated seam, the laminating seam tape across the stitches that is starting to come off. But that's about it. The spec pants are, there we get to the tech wear even more than with the Kevlar in this material, are a gore windstopper material, are made to have those pockets here, a small pocket there as well, and cargo pockets underneath a zipper there on the side, with internal pockets which don't really fulfill much of a use. You could put some key or something like that in there, yes, but if you sit it might well fall out again. But still, this is quite a good place for a cargo pocket. The windstopper has been really nice for use in the winter when the temperatures are colder and there is also the typical thing of how it has a very special cut which is all angular and peculiar and again as usual for many of those things there is some fading out of some of the material but these pants have held up for as often, not too often, as I've worn them really well. These things are, I have no idea, eight years? Something like that, I think. They are from the early seasons of Valence, old by now. So, quite a sign of the quality. There are some reviews of mine or some looks of mine at some things which came in between. There was a version of the Voronoi pants which very much went for a peculiar pattern that did not hold up at all, which I actually reviewed when I was in Beijing a few years back and had to send back. This time around I did not bring my insulated a uh, Gore-Tex field jacket with me, this I left at home now, but that field jacket is one that after washing, after I'd used it in Beijing, it was good again. I'm still wearing it all the time when I'm back home. Could have brought it, I just didn't feel like it. It's not getting as cold here, so I didn't want to. It is bulky and I got that as a replacement for an earlier normal field jacket which delaminated at some point. So, yes, it can be a mixed bag, but the warranty so far has always been worth it alone and the products before that had been worth it for a long time before. Well, this year one of the special things, let me go and grab it. Some three years ago, it must have been, I got myself a field over shirt. This is also one of those peculiar things for the performance, menswear, techwear, whatever you want to call it. The material of this is not the most convincing to me. It is just some densely woven polyester, so it has some water resistance, but it's not really protecting against rain unless that is really just a drizzle. But then, okay, it is slightly protective against wind, but it's well, thin, just an overshirt really, as they called it. But in this military inspired look, it has the two pockets here, the two pockets there. In this case, no pockets inside, just the typical architectural look of the seam tape. But with this, I went to Japan two years ago. I came here with this already in the summer. It has its fading. I've worn this quite a bit, so there is some discoloration. But you can wear it like that, quite like a blazer jacket. 
can wear it like this, a bit more of a military inspired look, or you can close it down completely. And then it does get quite protective. It's not a blazer, and I also have one of the blazers where you have the collar that you can also really stand up for some additional protection very nicely and snap it shut and have extra pockets and whatnot. I really wanted to bring it, but I did not have any room anymore. Well, but this field over shirt, a passport fits in here exactly, a telephone fits, some other stuff fits. So you have everything you need for travels. You don't look like an idiot if you travel with that. You look like you could, you can, I have done it, wear a tie with it. It's kind of fortunate I did not get the blue version because it would have looked like some Mao Zedong suit wearer here especially. But with this I have sometimes been looking more communist than the communist party cadres we have been meeting. But this made it possible for me to travel nicely and have all my stuff securely on me. And at the same time, borrow a tie, get a white shirt and go to some business meetings, government meetings and functions like that. And look almost like I'm wearing some suit and pants, which was pretty nice. This really saved me. Now I have a suit with me but it's much more heavy and even less protective and all of that, much less of something for travel. Well, and with, with some of the things we get to really a very different situation, talking about durability. And that would be right here and now. What has changed, you might think, you might wonder? Well, actually, There is a little bit of an issue with the cut somehow, with the way it folds up. Why is there an issue? Because this is the operant shirt from two or three seasons, no, two or three years ago. Another version, a redo of this Kevlar material. The color changed a bit to be a bit more brownish than the other one, which was more green. The pockets are different. Now there are two pockets here on the sides, made in a very peculiar way, just hidden underneath that. The snap placards have become much smaller. Here especially we do not have the zip now on this version, but there are just snaps. But it's again a Kevlar material, it's again likely to hold up for a pretty long time and military uniform like though it might look a bit it's going to last for a while and I think it doesn't look too badly. And also from two years ago, these are a newer version of Gorbin Stopper Pants, the Field Pants. They just recently ended up in the outlet store of Arcturix in Perndorf in my size. So I had missed them during the time I went to Japan and needed the money for something else. So now when they reappeared, I just had to get a pair of them because I liked them too much. There are other Gore-Tex when stopper pants now around actually, but in a cut I don't like so much. So these were the field pants from 2017, 2018, thereabouts, yeah, 2017. Again, a bit of this angular cut. Pockets in the back, this time also just in a very special cut with a flap above them that keeps things inside and also with a flap cargo pockets on the sides. Again, with little pockets inside, one of them rather here. But again, I really like having the cargo pockets here because I think this is the one place where they work out really well. I tried one pair of pants which also tried to go for something like that but then had them here which is just not good. You don't want to sit on your stuff. This is the thing that this sort of performance menswear is about. 
They're going to be good in a bit of rain. They're going to be good when it's cold and windy, for sure. They have already been good like that. And at the same time, lots of space to store things, to carry things, and a look that is at home even with a suit jacket or something. And you can find in the change from the old things to the newer things, the good products of theirs have held up tremendously well. The looks of it are still stylish, still modern. So this is an outfit of the day, which is an outfit of every day. It has all been expensive. I've only rarely been able to afford something of it. But these things have held up for a really long time. So with a few select things, it's a good look, it's performance, it's worth the money, and it's a step actually, for a case like mine certainly, towards sustainability, because those things have been lasting for ages. In my book, that's pretty much all good.